Morning folks, Brian here. It's uh, Sunday, December 14, 2025. <clears throat> uh, a brief video. I thought of this when I was uh, getting ready to do my planting for next year's vegetables and remembering what happened in uh, 2021. So back in 2021, here in Southern British Columbia, and I, I don't know where else, uh, we sustained a lot of burn damage uh, on our crops. I'm not talking about heat. I'm talking about radiation burn, ultraviolet radiation burn. And a lot of crops failed. Uh, before I get into that, um, for anybody to say that our protected field is down by 30%, It's basically an uneducated guess. Okay. Without the data it is a vague, non-definable statement with, again, no presented data to support that uh, percentage of loss. Absolutely nobody, including me, can give you a percentage. We do not know. We do not have access to the... Uh, Swarm mission, the European Space Agency who lost three satellites up in space to monitor the state of our magnetic field. Now, if it is beginning to uh, fragment and destabilize into a multi multipolar field, you cannot have a measurement for the field as a whole. If it's going to be weak in one area, stronger here, openings here and multiple poles are beginning to, to develop, you cannot say overall we've lost 30%. You also can't say, well, because the uh, the, Aurora, the Aurora lights are going as far down as Mexico, therefore we've lost 30%. It's not very scientific statement. So again, folks, please... Please, if the process takes on average of 7,000 years and we've only just started, we've only started 121 years ago. And if we're about to go into the period of tribulation, why are we worried about it? Why are people trying to scare the shit out of people? So, again, the field strength has to go down to almost 0% <clears throat> in order for the actual flip to, uh, to happen. And, of course, we would be all burnt to a crisp. Now, even if the excursion continues to a geomagnetic flip, there is the recovery time to reorganize a stable magnetic field. Okay. We're here. Pole flips here. Okay. On average, 7,000 years. It could be 2,000 years. It could be 12,000 years. That is the average. We're here. Just a, just, a, just a tiny, tiny little bit. That point in between, which could last about 1,000 years, we are under a multipolar field. Four, six, eight, ten magnetic poles, resulting in increased ultraviolet sea level radiation penetrating here, 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 here. It meanders about. Now, this does not mean we're not in danger right now. I believe we are. I believe we're at the very, very, very beginning of the uh, destabilization to the point that. Uh, we are beginning to see and feel the effects. And I'm going to show you one example. Um, so, ultraviolet radiation does not only damage and affect human DNA, it also affects plant DNA. They know this. This is why they want to get us to transition to eating the bugs. 
because they know our crops are going to fail. I have shown you multiple times, there's lots of new people here. My next video is going to be uh, the beginning of my planting season. I grow as much food as I can every year. And I protect much of my food in what's called twin wall polycarbonate panels. It's a plastic based material that is proven to deflect cosmic radiation. Something I learned eight years ago. So what I'm going to show you uh, what happened uh, 2021. Now, back in 2021, I planted 89 uh, potato plants in three different areas. One, out in the open, exposed to the sun. A second area covered in only the burlap shade cloths, whose uh, stitching is like quarter inch stitching. And then a third grouping uh, underneath my protective polycarbonate panels. These are the potatoes that I harvested underneath my uh, protective polycarbonate panels. However, these were the ones planted outside full exposure to the sun, no protection. Same potato seeds, same time of the year. This is DNA damage, folks. This is what happens. So ultraviolet radiation can affect uh, plant growth, DNA damage, quantity, quality of the food. Absorbed through the, uh, the greenery of the plant down into the root vegetable, the potato. Yummy, yummy, huh? Now I'm going to show you once again a segment from the movie The Core. In the movie The Core, this is opening the magnetic field, bringing in high intensity ultraviolet sea level radiations coming in. Boiling the water, killing the fish. Now, I'm not trying to be like uh, Screaming Maniac Begley or Mr. MB33, whatever his name is. Now, that's a bit of over dramatization. That could very well happen in the future. I don't think we're going to be anywhere near there yet. It's possible. But that's an example of uh, an opening in Earth's magnetic field as it starts to develop a multipolar field multiple poles. So again, I'm thinking back in 2021 and all the damage it did to my potatoes and other crops, the Fraser Valley, a lot of the berries didn't make it. Strawberries, for example. So th there's one example in my belief, uh, in my opinion, that Southern British Columbia, and maybe it extended into Washington state, I don't know. I think it did where we had quite a bit of uh, crop failures from what they called then a heat dome. It wasn't a heat dome. There's two different levels of heat that we can uh, feel. Temperature and radiation. It is the radiative heat from the ultraviolet radiation coming in, which damages our crops. And I think that was one area. It was just meandering around for a while. Uh, subsequent years, my crops did uh, much better. And again, all the grid failures in Portugal, Spain, France, United Kingdom is another area, I suspect, that opened up. So just a quick talk about uh, what percentage. People sometimes ask me, oh, what percentage of field loss do you think? No one has that answer. Nobody. Not me. Not the next guy with a whole bunch of hundreds of thousands of subscribers, nobody. We can only observe what is happening on our planet. The disorientation of uh, the birds, for example, and the whales and the turtles who rely on a stable magnetic field lines to navigate off of and focus on. How our crops are doing. 
the deep stabilization and breakdown of our jet streams over the Western Hemisphere and so on. It's all we have to go on right now. So if I have time in my next video, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Um, so one thing I do, I, I grow my own food as much as I can. I'm just on a small uh, homemaker lot, uh, one quarter of an acre, but I'm util utilizing about 1,000 square feet. Um, for those who are new, when I get going, twice a week I do videos. Uh, status progress, I'm growing my food. It's also therapeutic to look at it all. And so uh, that's what I'm going to be starting right now. See, that's it. Actually, it's uh, not the end of the video. I'm just going to redo the animation of the field going through a pole flip just to refresh your memory. And then it's going to be the end of the video. And again, this is just a simulation. Let me turn off the sound of Earth's magnetic field going through a geomagnetic uh, flip, a pole flip. And again, the process in the middle is that it develops a multipolar configuration, weaker, chaotic, meandering. Red is north, blue is south, poles, magnetic poles. Actually, I gotta back up a minute. I'm gonna show you something. So you see this spot right here? Two poles of the same polar, polar, polarity are gonna try and oppose each other. This is gonna create a weak zone in between where the highly energetic particles and the ultraviolet radiation are gonna penetrate through. Let's continue. And the reversal is almost complete. 